Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back. Big day today. I am finally building my pedal board. So if you've been following the channel, you will know I'm giving away one of these pedal boards. Well, Temple Boards is in the Temple Red. This is the Space Gray. Same size, the Duo 24 here. Nice big pedal board. And uh, we're giving it away because I hit 75,000 subscribers. So if this video just came out and you're seeing it now, you still have time. We are announcing and picking the winner on Sunday. It should be Thursday today when this comes out. So watch the video announcing the contest to get a handle on all of the rules and enter. You can get, you know, up to five entries. And uh, yeah, we're giving it away right away here. So you're running out of time. And for those of you following the Home Depot guitar kit build, uh, my contest against Big D guitars with the SG kit from Solo Music Gear, relax. That video, the next one is coming out next week. We're gonna basically get this thing finished. So we are almost there. Uh, but yeah, paint's drying, that's why it's hanging up. And uh, let's build a pedal board. So I've shown you guys this before. You're gonna get the same thing if you win. Uh, it's got you know power already dealt with here and a switch on and off. Pretty awesome. It's not just a you know thing that you mount pedals on. And it's got our you know, input output stuff here. Our effects loop can be wired in. And there are other modular places, like you can pull these out, a couple plates on each side. You can pull those out and add other stuff. So we might do that. I've got a whole box full of stuff that I wanna try and get on here, which I threw in here to bring it down. Oh boy, this ought to be interesting. All right, let's go into voiceover. I'll show you guys what I'm dealing with here. We'll see what we can get laid out and I'll show you how I go about putting this thing together. Let's go. So I'm gonna start by just putting everything on here and seeing if I can get it all to fit. And first up, we've got our Roland GAFC foot switch. This is for my Boss Katana amp. I got the foot switch and the amp from solomusicgear.com. You can check out my affiliate link in the description if you want either of those. If you get it through there, it helps me out. Um, the switch is awesome, it controls the Katana. It's gonna be sweet. I've also got my looper here and my crybaby wah. And then on the left, you'll notice that interesting pedal with the graphics on it that I just moved over. That's actually something that I'm really excited to try out. It's the Acme Fuzz pedal, which was sent to me by a viewer of mine, actually. And if you want to pick one of those up, he sells them. I'm going to demo it in my next video. But those are available from j4guitargear.com. That link will be in the description, too. Another interesting thing on here at the back, I've got a five channel mixer from Fifine Technologies. You'll see at the end of the video here, or as we progress, I don't actually end up mounting that to the board. What I'm gonna do is stick that on the front because I'm only gonna use it occasionally, but that's gonna allow me to monitor the volume of various instruments and run them all through this board if I want. So that's gonna be really cool too. And last but not least, I've just pulled out my power supply that here, if you're going to be building a board like this, you're going to want an isolated power supply. I've got an inexpensive one. It's available through the Amazon link in the description, but there are, of course, really nice ones like the ones by uh, Seox, I think it's called, uh, stuff like that. Very expensive comparatively. I think that this one's going to do the trick just fine. You can see I'm ripping off all the rubber feet and everything on the bottom of these pedals now. I need a f as close to a flat surface as possible and a clean surface, they recommend that you actually clean these off with alcohol swabs on the bottom. Um, but yeah, make sure your surface is as flat and clean as possible and take off anything unnecessary down there because the mounting system on these pedal boards is awesome, but it requires you to have that clean bottom. What you do is you actually end up sticking an adhesive pad to the bottom of these rather than sticking Velcro on or something like that, they've got this quick mount system. So I'm pulling off the mounting brackets or pulling out the mounting brackets right now. They're each individually bagged. Um, so yeah, if anybody has a need for a bunch of individual small baggies, I don't want to hear about it. Anyway, so I'm pulling all of those out and I'm just kind of putting them on top of the pedals so I know how many I need and everything. Whoever wins this other pedal board is going to get a bunch of these, but if you need more, you can grab them at templeaudio.com, the same place you would grab one of these pedal boards. That link, of course, will also be in the description if you're interested in checking something out from there. They've got all sorts of cool stuff, but mostly a variety of these pedal boards in varying sizes and the mounts that you need for them. So now that I've got these pedals all laid out basically how I want them, what I do is I pull one off at a time and I put the mount down where it'll sit. I take the thumb screw off the back first so that it sits in there properly. And then while it's sitting there, 
I rip off the adhesive pad, the peel and stick thing, if you will, and then I go ahead and make sure that my pedal is lined up nice and straight. You'll see me do that. I'll kind of use the edge of the board or some reference point, maybe even the holes in the board, to make sure that it's good and square, and then I push it down real hard to make sure that it's sticking to that mounting bracket. And once I've got it stuck on there, just to play it safe, I pull it off and give it an extra squeeze to really make sure that that double-sided tape that they're using is on there nice and tight so that I don't have to worry about the pedals just falling off because that would kind of defeat the purpose of having a pedal board. This is more stable than any other mounting system I've seen though because once I've done that, I'm going to go ahead and, well, once I've gotten all of these on here basically, I'm going to go ahead and insert the thumb screw from the other side, which means that those pedals are going to be screwed right to the face of the board, bolted in place, and they're not going anywhere. <sighs> I've never had a pedal board before. This is very exciting. Um, on some of the bigger ones, for example, this foot switch, I'm using two mounting brackets. So the same principle applies. I make sure that they're both in there, seated properly so that they're the right distance apart, peel off the backing, and then stick the pedal down to them, and then I can just drop the pedal back in place. They've got three different sizes of these mounting brackets, so I've got my tiny little tuner up in the top right corner there that most of you have complained I've never used. Just kidding. Anyway, so I'm using a small one for that because that's a mini pedal. You know, if you've got a really robust heavy mini pedal, you can even put two of these small ones on there. You'll see I've got two of the brackets, the large and the medium, on my wah pedal because that one's so big. So. Use the appropriate sizes, use more than one if necessary, but there's no reason why you can't get every pedal that you want to that'll fit stuck on there real nice. You have to make sure, of course, that there's room between the pedals uh, for your cables. There are cables that are lower profile. I think a company called Lava Cable actually makes some really low profile ones uh, that you know don't stick out far off the side of the pedal, so you can jam more pedals on there if you want to. I'm pretty sure those are also available at templeaudio.com. You would think I would go look at that while I'm making this video, but I'm, I'm not, so feel free to check. Uh, in any event, it's not that difficult to just leave enough space for those audio and power cables to come out the sides of your pedals when necessary. There are cable management holes that you can see in the board there. They're the bigger ones. So you just need to run your cables from the pedals through the cable management holes. That's part of why I'm not bolting the pedals down now, because in order to get the cables through the cable management holes, I kind of have to lift the pedals up and feed the cables through there. So we will get to that in short order here, but in the interim, if anybody's playing a game where they have to drink every time I say the word cable, I feel oh so very sorry for you right now and recommend that you stop immediately. So this should be the last pedal other than the wah pedal that I am mounting on the front. Let's talk a little bit about the power supply while I continue here. The power supply I'm actually going to mount underneath. I want this thing to look good obviously and the whole point of having cable management holes is so that you can mount all of the audio and power cables underneath. The system though is the same. You just need to make sure that there's room for that screw to come through the top when you are figuring out your distances for everything. So I've left a space at the top there where I'm going to put my power supply on the bottom. You don't necessarily need that big a space. You just need to make sure that all the thumb screws are going to work. But that's where I'm putting mine and I'm going to have room to put another pedal on top at some point if I get one. I have a couple in mind. I also have a few more pedals that I could put on there. But uh, you know, I'm, I'm saving that space for something interesting. So now I'm going in and feeding my cables through the holes and I'm reaching underneath to screw in the pedals when they are ready to go. I don't have any of them bolted in yet. I want to make sure that all of the cables that go to a specific pedal are in place before I bolt that pedal down basically. So I make sure that my input and output are both in place. I make sure that my power cable is ready to go and then I can go in and actually bolt the pedal down without having to worry about having to go back and unscrew it and lift it up again to be able to get all those cables into the right spaces. Now by the time I was done installing all of these I had a lot of cables on the bottom so you may also want to use some zip ties to manage some of that once you're all through getting everything wired up. There is one pedal on this board that I didn't even end up hooking up it is the octave fuzz pedal, kind of green one in the top right corner there. Frankly, I, I don't like it. it. It looks kind of cool, but I kind of hate that pedal. And my power supply, 
only supplied eight pedals, so I ignored that one and it worked out just fine. The cool part uh, about the foot switch there is it's going to give me all of the sounds that my amp head, my Katana amp head has, which is a massive variety, including effects, distortion, all sorts of stuff. And it's going to give me all of that without requiring power. So that is awesome. Uh, we'll talk about that a little bit more later. I'm really excited to try that one out in, a, in my next video as well. Hopefully I can get it to work because I'm technologically inept. But I don't need power for that. I'm pretty happy about that. I had kind of a moment where I looked at my power supply and went, Oh no, this isn't going to work. But it all kind of seemed to work out just fine. I am waiting on a couple more cables. Uh... But right now what I'm doing is I'm wiring all of my fuzz, distortion, overdrive, boost type stuff together. So that includes my Boss Metal Core, my Acme Fuzz, and my Joyo kind of cheap version of the Ibanez overdrive that everybody likes so much. I'm wiring all of those together. That's going to go before the amp. Also the wall pedal and my tuner, which is at the beginning, those all go before the amp. Then after that, I have an effects loop. There are lots of better and more complicated videos out there about what to put where in your pedal chain, but for me, it's fairly straightforward. I put my distortion, overdrive, and fuzz before the amp, and I put anything that I qualify as an effect or classify as an effect, including my chorus and my delay, in the effects loop. Then my last pedal in the loop is always going to be my loop pedal. <laughs> Funny how that works out. Uh, because I want all of those effects and overdrive and everything to be going into the loop pedal. Now, I can't put the loop pedal before the amp, because if I'm applying any kind of in-amp distortion or anything like that, it's going to distort what's coming out of the loop pedal instead of what's going in. And that's not what I want, because then I can't really effectively switch partway through. If I want to put in a clean background loop and then solo over it with some kind of distortion, well, I can't do that if that pedal's in the wrong place. So, I'm connecting all of my preamp stuff together, and I'm connecting all of my effects loop stuff together, and then I can wire that all into the receptacles on the side of the pedal board when I get the cables for that, because they're longer, and I just ordered them from Amazon as I was making this video. So, that's also going to be coming in the next video due to my disorganization. I apologize. Don't be afraid to shuffle these pedals around once you've got the mounting plates on there. You can see there are tons of holes to mount them to, so there's always that ability to move it over a quarter of an inch or so. No problems with that. And of course, if later on you decide you don't like where they're sitting, you can simply move them that way too, unlike if you were to actually stick them on or something. This allows for more flexibility than if you were using Velcro, in my opinion, which is a fairly popular mounting option for pedal boards and you can mount them vertical or horizontal based on your preference without really any added difficulty. So, all in all, this is a pretty great system. I'm really happy with it. I can't wait to demo it for you guys. I do, in fact, despite all my clumsy mucking around here, manage to get it all mounted pretty good, looking good, and functioning properly. So, on Sunday, we're gonna test it out. Here I am mounting the power like we talked about before, I just do it the same way. I, I mount it on the top first, basically. I position everything so that I know that it's going to line up. I stick it to the mounting plate the same way that I do the pedal. Everything's the same, except that once I've done that and made sure that it is stuck on there properly, I'm going to go in and put it underneath and mount it from there. And the thumb screw simply goes in from the top instead. And really that is about it for getting all of these pedals mounted. They're basically all in place now. All I've got left is the relatively straightforward task of running all the power cables that are now forming a plate of spaghetti underneath this thing into the power module. Very straightforward. It's just a matter of plugging a bunch of stuff in. So we can run through the last of the cable management steps here in pretty much super high speed before we get to that stage. And I was thinking, you know, maybe I'd put on some music here, but there's only like a minute of this voiceover stuff left. So I figure it makes more sense for me to just annoy everybody by telling a silly dad joke. So here we go. What did the pony say when it had a sore throat? You ready? <clears throat> Sorry, 
I'm a little horse. Yeah, that, that's that's the joke. Anyway, I'm just testing the pedals here. Uh, you can see that I've got power to everything that I ran power to. So, yeah, I'm happy. Everything seems to be working. Really happy with how this pedal board looks, possibly because it's my first one, but I think it's probably more because this is an awesome setup and Temple Audio has done a great job. Remember, if you haven't got your entries in, go do that. You got a chance to win one of these. I'm not giving you any pedals right now, but you could buy those, right? All right, guys, there it is. Not going to lie, that thing's pretty friggin' heavy. Everything on there good and solid, stuck on there nicely. I think it looks pretty good, actually. I'm just waiting on a couple cables. I don't have uh, kind of the three footers that I need to be able to connect everything, basically. So all the, all the pedals are connected to each other, but to run them in and out of that section on the end, that module that is then going to allow me to put some of them in the effects loop and some of them straight through. I still need some cables for that. So that part's next. <laughs> We're gonna get that stuff on there and do a demo video all at the same time. And like I said, we're going to give one of these away on Sunday. So hopefully we're going to do all of that on Sunday as well. It depends. I, I don't know how long the cables are going to take to get here. One other thing I should note, you, if you're not using one of the Boss Katana amps or whatever, you probably won't have one of these big foot switches like this. Um, this guy, which I'm really excited to use, doesn't take power and doesn't really get connected to the other pedals. It operates the amp itself. So kind of an interesting twist there. And because of the way the modules set up on the side, unless I were to get another one of those modules, which I don't really think I need to do, uh, this wouldn't get run through there at all. It actually just runs right through here, straight to the amp. Now I can run this through the cable management and out the side because you can actually take off chunks of the side panels to be able to run stuff through. I may do that, that may look cleaner. Uh, so it's entirely possible that I'll go that route and you know, you can put an expression pedal on this thing too. I don't have one of those. I'll, I've got my normal wah pedal, but I don't have the kind of expression pedal that you put on one of these. So I'm not going to bother. But if you are going to be using one of those, you got to make sure you have room. And I have barely enough room to get cables onto there. But yeah, I don't have a pedal, so it really doesn't matter. Anyway, as always, guys, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please feel free to give it a thumbs up. Remember to subscribe and check out the other video if you haven't already, also that you're eligible to win one of these pedal boards. They're fun to build, they're fairly easy to build, and you know, it's a Duo 24, it's supposed to hold two rows of pedals, particularly if you don't have this foot switch. You can get quite a few pedals on there. So, I don't know what your collection looks like, but hey, what better excuse to go out and get some awesome pedals than having one of these. Thanks again, hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you next time. Have a good one.